Shalom, most high grace bless. Shalom, most high and grace bless. Wait for a few people to come on to log on. Shalom, most high Christ bless everyone. We'll get started in a few in a few minutes. We're going to get started. Um, I think we have enough people on now. All right, we're going to present the prayers. Face Jerusalem. Brothers, uncover your heads. Sisters, cover your heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you, Lord, ask you forgiveness for our sins, Lord. Lord, have mercy on us, Lord. Heal us up, Lord. Grant us protection, Lord, during these evil times. Send blessings upon us, Lord. Your holy angels around the sick, Lord. Guide us and lead us into the kingdom, Lord. Lord, we thank you for bringing us again to for the opportunity to teach class to our people, Lord, that may edify them. Lord, we ask you for all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Ah. Shalom, shalom, everyone. How's everyone doing? I'm Officer Gabar, IUAC Las Vegas. Um, again, I pray all is well with you during these uh, trying times. All right, I'm going to read this disclaimer before it gets started. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent Bible based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone, or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat, as stated in Leviticus 5 and 1. All right, I need, I need a scribe. I need a brother to scribe. One of you brothers, scribe, type the scriptures for the people online. I need a scribe. 
Okay, all praises, Brother Adam. All praises. Uh, the title of the class is Don't Miss the Wedding. Don't Miss the Wedding. That's the title of the class. Um, and I'll just I'll just say this for the class. Uh, if you're going to have side conversations, please log off. It's a distraction. All right. If you're going to have side conversations, please log off. Have respect for your brothers and sisters that are paying attention and want to want not not to be distracted from the class. All right. Um, let's go to the first scripture. Second Corinthians 13 and 5. Second Corinthians 13 and 5. Uh, hold your questions until end of class. Hold your questions. All right. Second Corinthians 13 and 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves, though ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. So in this during this time, well, at always we should be examining ourselves. Am I doing what's pleasing to the Lord? What am I missing? Am I keeping the commandments? Am I doing all I can in this truth to push forth the truth? That's how we should be examining ourselves. We know ourselves. We know what issues we have. But the scripture says for us to examine ourselves. One, I need, I just need one scribe. And uh, Brother Adam already volunteered. I see, I see he's still posting scriptures. So only one scribe. That's Brother Adam. All right, so this Second uh, Corinthians 13 and 5. Imag uh, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith prove your own selves know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you except ye be reprobates so you know during this time um, time for a lot of us we have to examine ourselves verse 6 but I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Let's see. I'm going to look up that word. That's not a Negro word. Verse 6 again. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Here's a definition of reprobate. An unprincipled person, often used affectionately, hmm, I don't like that definition, but here are synonyms, rascal, scoundrel, villain, evildoer, transgressor, sinner, degenerate. So those are some of the synonym, synonyms for reprobate. And we should not be those uh, reprobate in his truth. Verse 6 again. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil. Do that, with, uh, do that we should appear approved. But that ye should do that which is honest. Though we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. 
So we have to be walking billboards for Christ. Every believer, walking billboards for Christ. Are we setting the right example? All right, but the topic is don't miss the wedding. Well, people may ask, what wedding are you talking about? Well, we're going to read, read some scriptures. And uh, let's go to Matthew. Hmm. Matthew 22, verse 1. Matthew 22, verse 1. Let's start there. Remember, we always have to examine ourselves. You know, um, overheard a conversation about examining ourselves. And one of the hardest things to do for some of us is to look in the mirror. Hmm. Some of us, for some of us to look in the mirror. But, stay on topic. Matthew 22, verse 1. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. I need everybody to meditate on this. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took the servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Again, this is a parable. All right? So you have these set of servants that went and killed kill the other ones then saith he to his servants the wedding is ready but they which were bidden were not worthy hmm. go ye therefore into the highways and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage I'm gonna pause right here we'll go to the Luke 14 and 23 in Luke 14 and 23 and the Lord said unto the servant go out into the highways and byways and compel them to come in that my house may be filled uh, how many, I'm going to look up that word, compel. Hmm. Compel. To drive or urge forcefully or irresistibly compel that means force them to come in so when we go out to the streets and teach a lot of people especially our, our people are offended why y'all so loud why y'all talking so loud why you so rough well compel means to forcibly come in 
Uh, back to Matthew 22 and verse 9. Matthew 22 verse 9 go ye therefore unto the highways and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage bid to the marriage hold this I'm going to Proverbs 1 Proverbs 1, let's see where I want to start. One and twenty. The book of Proverbs, chapter one, verse twenty. Remember, we're going out to the highways to compel them to come in. Come to the wedding. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, and verse 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She saith to the, in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city, she uttereth her words. Wow. So wisdom crieth without. What's wisdom? The scriptures. The Bible. Commence. The Spirit of Christ. Hmm. So wisdom is out in the street crying out. Verse 21 again. She crieth in a chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her voices, oh her words, excuse me. Verse 22. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? Fools hate knowledge. Oh, man, oh, man. We did a flyer mission, and we came across this, this Jake that has come to our camp a few times so he knows better he knows better and we saw him with these uh, uh, I guess they were his pets two Edomite women Lord have mercy smoking a cigarette and before, before I think Officer Yuan, Officer Yuan was with, with us and before Officer Yuan could recognize him he looked at him and was like, bro, you know better. You're smoking a cigarette on the Sabbath and you get ready to go to the liquor store on the Sabbath with these two Edomites. But, and the Jake said, uh, what about the name? Uh, uh, that's all you got? Look, man, that doctrine has been smashed 20 times over. It's destroyed. It's done. That's done. So that's all you have. And you know why? Because that's an excuse to not keep the commandments. It's just an excuse. So, bro, you out here, no fringes, smoking a cigarette, on your way to the liquor store with two Edomites. And that's all you got, the name. And I said, I said to all of you on, I said, don't waste time. Don't, don't, don't waste your time. He's done. He's done. So, hmm, hold on a minute. That's, that's all you got. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, 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 we're not, we're not getting into that. Uh, Titus. Titus chapter 3 and verse 10. Titus 3 and 10. Yeah, this, this Negro knows better. 
Yeah, walking his dog. What the hell? Titus 3, verse 10. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. You know what that says? Really? Shake the dust off your shoes and keep it moving. Brother, you were warned. You were warned. You know better. But you want to hang on to the name. And you're not keeping any commandments. Well, I'm going to do me. Okay, you go. Go ahead. Go ahead. I said, also, you want to waste time. Let's, let's keep it moving. Don't waste time. And then another Jake. We give him a flyer. Oh, you want me to, to uh, uh, believe in this, uh, the Bible that the white man wrote? Oh, let's keep it moving. Keep it moving. Listen, um, we don't have time to argue with fools. We don't have time. Don't you see what's going on? God is judging the earth. And do you think that we have time for fools? No. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Those days are gone or over. Bruh, you heard and you rejected. Uh, hold on a minute. Let's go to Genesis. No, I'm not going to no no deep breakdown. I know everybody's getting all lathered up. New no. Genesis Chapter Six and verse let's see verse five. Genesis 6 and verse 5. Pay attention. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Hmm. Um, you always hear the Christians say, God knows my heart. Yeah, he does. He knows he's wicked as hell. Right? Verse 6. And he repented the Lord that he made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I made, have made them. Verse 6, verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Let's see, let's see why. Verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. I'm going to read verse 9 again. This is a banger to those who said only Christ was perfect. Well, just as here, Noah was perfect. And what made him perfect? It said, These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. So what was Noah, Noah doing that made him just and perfect and to be able to walk with God? Hmm. Hmm. Let's go to Romans. We're coming back here. Romans chapter 7.
Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Romans 7 verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. So what makes you holy? Keeping the commandments. What makes you just? Keeping the commandments. What makes you good? Keeping the commandments. Look, look, it doesn't change. Let's go back to Genesis 6. Uh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Psalms 19 and verse 7. Psalms 19 verse 7 the law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul so the laws of God are perfect there's nothing wrong with God's laws thou shalt not steal thou shalt not covet it's perfect that's what changes us from a Negro to a God on the earth to a sister that was a stripper now she's following the examples in Proverbs 31 through what the laws keeping the commandments of God I'm going to read it again. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. So without God's laws, we are simple. And simple is another word for stupid. But those that keep God's laws are wise. They have wisdom. Go back to Genesis 6 and 9. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Why? Because he kept the commandments. Hmm. So the commandments, the law existed back then? Yes. Yes. So that, that's why we disregard the, the uh, Egyptologists. Well, we disregard them. Bro, we have the knowledge of the commandments from the beginning. Before your, uh, what's that nonsense, they, 32 Confessions of my my what I don't know what the hell I don't care about that stuff. What do I oh I do care about is us keeping the commandments of God. Verse ten and Noah begat three sons Ham, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, that the end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. I will destroy them with the earth. Verse 14. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without the the pitch. Or right, I'm not gonna go through the uh, all the details, but there's something going on here. Verse 18. I'm gonna drop down to verse 18. 
but with thee will I establish my covenant and thou shalt come into the ark thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons wives with thee why why is the Lord will allow Noah and his house why is that verse 18 again but with thee will I establish let me start at verse 17 verse 17 and behold I even I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the death the breath of life from under the heaven from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die but thee will I establish my covenant and thou shalt come into the ark thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons wives with thee and my question is why are they allowed into the ark Hmm. Hmm. So I'm looking at your responses. Uh, brother, I, I'm gonna jack up your name. Uh, Olad, Oladu, Oladu, you're absolutely correct. Noah's family was keeping the commandments. Noah commanded his house by keeping the commandments, teaching them the commandments. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? sounds familiar Abraham did the same thing and did commanded his house after the commandments of God so they kept the commandments here here's an example it says Noah and his wife It says, Thou and thy sons and thy wife, thy wife, thy wife. He did not make any compromises with the commandments. His wife had to be under obedience. And God saw that. So, pay attention. Not, uh, oh, I'm going to keep the Sabbath, but you can stay home. Or you can do whatever you want to do. No, mm -mm. my whole house is going to be in order and follow God and his commandments. <laughs> See here, his wife made it to the ark. She's going to make it into the ark to escape death. And destruction hmm. his whole house were allowed into the ark to escape death and destruction why because they kept God's commandments they were in obedience in subjection in subjection hmm I'm a jump stay in Genesis So I'm just going to uh, fast forward. So the flood came. Not yet. Not yet. I'm jumping too far. 
Um, let's see, go to chapter Genesis chapter seven. So he got instructions on which beast to bring into the ark. Genesis chapter 7 and verse 6. Genesis 7 and verse 6. Yeah, don't post scriptures uh, unless I ask. But yes, yes, you are correct. Genesis 7 chapter and the 6th verse. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 5. Verse 5. Sorry about that. Verse 5. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. Read it again. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. The Lord gave him instructions on the ark, the dimensions of the ark, what beasts to bring into the ark. It says, Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. Uh, I don't see where, if y'all read it on, on your own, but I don't see anywhere where, the, where Noah said, but Lord, I feel and I think no God gave him the commandment Noah did obeyed God gave him another commandment Noah obeyed no back talk verse 6 and Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth verse 7 and Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, wife, obeyed. She listened. She submitted herself to him. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm going to read verse 7 again. And Noah went in, went into the ark, and his sons and his wife. Oh, something else too. Did it say wives or wife? All manner of wickedness was going on back then. It's nothing new under the sun. It says, and his wife. Hmm. And his son's wives with him. Hmm. Into the ark because of the waters of the flood. So they were allowed into the ark, into protection of the Lord, because of their obedience. Their obedience. Not feign words, not uh, lip service, through their actions. Through their actions, they were allowed into the ark. The ark was for protection from destruction. I'm going to drop down to verse 14. Genesis chapter 7 verse 14 They and every beast after his kind and all the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind 
and every fowl after his kind, and uh, every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. Verse 16. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Who got it? Who got it? <laughs> I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see who was paying attention. I'm not gonna read it again right now. I'm gonna, I want to see. But who got it? Verse 16. Let's see who got it. Hmm. Boom. I'm sorry, I can't really see uh, too well in this chat thing. Lucky. Hold on a minute. Sister, uh, forgive me for jacking your name up, Sister Rabah. She got it. She got it. The Lord shut the door. It didn't say Noah shut the door. It says, and the Lord shut him in. The Lord shut the door. All right. Now I'm going to proceed with the killing with the destruction but Noah and your house come in it's over game is over do you think uh, do you think there were people banging at the door hmm Says the Lord shut him in. The Lord shut him in. So that foolishness that they're teaching in uh, Christian churches that God uh, gives us a second chance after the tribulation, it's madness. It's madness. Now is our second chance. Now is grace and mercy. But that's about to run out. That's about to run out. God is judging the earth. Now you can go, you can, uh, you know, bug out conspiracy theories or whatever. God is in total control. God is in total control. Hmm. He gives his commandments and expects obedience. Not lip service, not back talk. Not doing your own thing, doing as you wilt. That's that's of Satan. That's of the devil. But the Lord shut the door. It's over. Y'all had your chance. Y'all had your chance, but it's over. It's a wrap. Now I'm going to start killing. So, you know, uh... God destroyed the earth with the flood that time. That time. But God is coming to destroy with fire. Go back to Matthew. Matthew 22.
Hmm. Matthew 22 and verse 9 again. Your second chance is now. Hmm. Matthew 22 and verse 9. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So we go, we prophesy, compelling them to come in. Verse 10. So those servants went out into the highway and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Hmm. Remember, the topic is don't miss the wedding. Don't miss the wedding. Verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. So, this, this man didn't have a wedding garment on. What is that wedding garment? that he didn't have on. Hmm. We're going to keep reading. We're going to keep reading. I'm going to read verse 11 again. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. What is that wedding garment? That's my question. So this man didn't have a wedding garment on. Hold this. Go to Isaiah 61 and verse 10. Isaiah 61 and 10. Hmm. I'm read Isaiah 61 and 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. The commandments of God. The law, statutes, and commandments. Hmm. But this one man. And no works either. So he had no commandment. He wasn't keeping the commandments and didn't have any works. He didn't have any works because the works comes with keeping the commandments but this one was not prepared all this time 
he heard and didn't do. He heard and didn't prepare. Remember y'all, Christ is coming as a thief in the night. He's coming as a thief in the night. Go back to Matthew 22 and verse 11 again. Matthew 22 verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding gar garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. He was speechless. Hmm. So when Christ returns, he doesn't want to hear our excuses. You mean to tell me I sent my prophets out to warn you and you are not prepared? Mm. You're not prepared. Hmm. He was speechless. He didn't have anything to say. Christ is not going to want to hear your back talk, by the way. Christ knows your thoughts. So what are you going to say? It says here he was speechless. Hmm. Verse 13. This is, this is some heavy stuff here. Verse 13. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. For many are called, but few are chosen. So in verse 13, uh, Christ said, just take this Negro out here and kill him. Hold on. Second address. Second address 9. And I'm going to start at verse 7. Second address 9, verse 7. Remember, we uh, went into Genesis, read about Noah and the ark. And who was allowed in? And who shut the door? After those that were allowed in were in the ark. Hmm. Second Edges 9 and verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved. Read it again. And everyone that shall, shall, shall is future tense. So when in churches you hear, I'm saved. No, you're not. This is a cut right here. I'm going to read it again. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works. What is his works? Keeping the commandments and doing the work. And by faith, faith in Christ, whereby ye shall, 
whereby ye have believed. So you mean to tell me I gotta have both? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. I'm gonna read verse seven again. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and with my within my borders for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning wow 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 I gotta read verse 8 again you know, some, when you'll find out too. You'll read uh, certain scriptures, and then you'll read them again at, over a process of time, and then an understanding comes out. It's like boom. You mean I've been reading this all this time, and this now it hits me. Hmm. Oh, maybe I'll go into that. Verse 8 shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land. So that means that those imposters over there, they're not the Jews, they're not the real Jews. They're not the Israelites. They are imposters. And within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Do you realize that the chosen and the elect have already been chosen and picked from the beginning? From the beginning, uh, they were already selected from the beginning. Where's that scripture? Mm. Second Edges 9 and verse 18. Second Edgers nine and verse eighteen. And now when I prepared the world which was not yet made, even for them to dwell in that now live. No man spake against me. Hmm. From the beginning. And now when I prepared the world, which was not, <clears throat> excuse me, not yet made, even for them to dwell in that now live, no man spake against me. Uh, what does that mean? Hmm. So, th the souls were created from the beginning, before the world was even made. And no man spake against me. Meaning, the Lord said, I'm going to create you to be the devil the Bible speaks of. And what, the, what do those evil souls say? Yes, Lord. And you, I'm going to create to be the righteous. Those that will do what I say and follow me, whatever I say. And we said, those souls said, yes, Lord. They all agreed from the beginning. From the beginning. Jump back up to verse 9. Hmm. Huh, man. Y'all, I, I, I say this often. Y'all don't know what y'all are into. 
I don't know what you're into. You know, I spoke to a wise man. And he said he was in the truth for 10 years before he realized what he's into. 10 years. Hmm. Verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case which now have abused, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Dwell in torments. Hold this. Go to Isaiah. Let's see. Dwell in torments. Hmm. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Dwell in torments. Dwell in torments. Hold on. Oh, yeah, there you go. Isaiah 66 and verse, let's see what I'm going to start. I'll just go to get to the point, 24. Isaiah 66 and 24. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, chapter 66, verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. So when you die, hmm, death comes with skin worms. But you're going to feel those skin worms. And the fire. How long? Forever. You mean to tell me I'm going to feel those skin worms and I'm going to feel them crawl and all everything that they do to a carcass? Yes, you're going to feel it. So I'm going to feel that fire. I don't know about y'all, but I'm allergic to nuclear fire. I'm allergic to nuclear fire. Uh, that's having fear of the Lord. But some of y'all don't fear the Lord. Let's go back to 2nd Ezra's. Second Edgers nine and verse nine again. Yes, that's oh boy, we're gonna keep reading. Oh Y'all better get your act right. We were all of us. We gotta get our act right. We should be examining ourselves. Second Edgers nine verse nine then shall they be in pitiful case which now have abused my ways and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me well what's, what's the benefits uh, grace how about that the, the fact that we're alive. How about that? And they that have loathed my law. 
while they yet had liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was upon unto them, understood not, but despised it. Hope y'all, hope y'all meditating on this. That's this get this is getting to your spirit. It says in verse eleven again, and that and they that have loathed my law, while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was upon unto them, understood not, but despised it. So they they hate God's laws. They hated the grace and mercy that was given to us. Verse 12. The same must know it after death by pain. By pain. And they say, uh, they get another chance. The same must know it after death by pain. Oh, you mad? Do you imagine? No, you can't. That's why some of some of our people don't fear the Lord. You imagine God killing you, bringing you back, so you can continue to feel the pain. How long? Forever. Forever. That's that's a long time. Remember, God created time, but He said forever. After must know it by uh, after death by pain, pain. Uh, you mean that there's not going to be a break in that in that pain? No. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Just imagine, think of the worst pain that you ever experienced, and it still, still can't sum up to the pain that we would feel if we don't keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. Just imagine that. Uh, now, in, in I hate the dentist. That pain. Even though the dentist say, says I have a high uh, pain threshold. No, I don't. Mm, no, because, you know, y'all can give me, uh, what's that stuff they stick in your gums? Just imagine that. That's a needle. And they stick into your gums, and you, and they put that uh, I forgot what it's called to numb yourself. But anyway, that's pain worse than that. Worse than that. Oh Lord have mercy. Hold on a minute. So the place of repentance is still open. But some of our people are going to reject it and hate it and despise it. Um, do you understand? Let's just take one example. Sabbath day. Sabbath day. Nova King, thank you, thank you, thank you. Nova King. Yeah, I, uh, Nova King. Yeah, shoot me up. But, uh, anyway, where was I? Oh, Sabbath day. Some of, uh, I'm talking about in the truth. I'm talking about in the truth now. Some of us look at the Sabbath day as, uh, it's no big thing. Hmm. Really? Let's go to Second Maccabees.
Second Maccabees. Hmm. I'm going to start at verse 6 and then I'm going to jump. Second Maccabees 6 and 6. Hmm. Second Maccabees six and six. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts, or to or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. When it when it says neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew you know at that time it was against the law it was against the law to keep a Sabbath feast days it was against the law or to even profess to be called a Jew just, just think about it. Think about it. Um, just think about it. I'm going to keep reading. And in the day of the king's birth, every month, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices, and to keep the feast of Bacchus was kept. And the feast of Bacchus was kept, and the Jews were compelled to to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy those wicked festivals that our people take part in wicked festivals wicked holidays right uh, there is a casino uh, in Vegas called Caesars and there is a buffet <clears throat> and when you come I think you come back out of that buffet there is a plaque on the wall with a statue and now on that plaque says Bacchus the place is called Bacchanal after Bacchus Esau puts it right in our face and we just, you know, we just, do -de 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 -de. Uh, uh, they know, right? Verse 8, moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. Well, we were forced against our will. Verse 9 And whoso would not conform themselves to the manner of the Gentiles, the other nations, especially Esau, should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present misery. I'm going to read on. For there were two women brought, who had circumcised their children, who when they had openly led around, led round about the city, and the babes hanging at their breasts, and they cast them down headlong from the wall. So you have these two sisters. Uh, the, I'm going to keep the commandments I'm going to keep the commandments I'm going to have my, my boys circumcised they were killed for that and the children verse 11 and others that had run together into caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly So some of our forefathers and foremothers went to caves to keep the Sabbath because they knew if they were 
profound they will be killed right I'm going to read verse 11 again. And others that had run together into caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly being discovered to Philip were all burnt together because they made a conscience that they made a conscience to help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day. They risk their lives to keep the Sabbath, which is the most sacred day. I'm going to say it again. Keep the Sabbath, which is the most sacred day. However, oh, Uh, you got those that that are uh, teaching against the Sabbath. All right. Okay. But the Scripture says to help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day. But you'll have those among us who say I'm too tired to keep the Sabbath I'm going to stay home and teach my wicked family rather than do what the Bible says but our forefathers and our foremothers risked their lives risk their lives to keep the Sabbath and yet today uh, we have those that make excuses not to keep the Sabbath make excuses not to keep the feast days make excuses not to congregate I've spoken to brothers and sisters that in their city there's no school the nearest school may be over three hours from them yet in cities that have schools those that are in the truth I'm putting that in quotes for a reason make excuses not to come to the Sabbath or feast days Don't miss the setting. Hmm. Don't miss the wedding. Uh, I'm going to Exodus. Hold on. Thirty one. Let's start at verse 13. Exodus 31 and 13. And here we are now on a quarantine, stay at home orders, and now we can't see each other. I don't know. I don't know about y'all who are under those orders, but hey, I'm struggling right now. Can't see my brothers and sisters. That's what I live for. All week you're around the heathen, and then we have one day to be around each other, and now we can't even see each other. Exodus 31 and 13. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, 
that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath thereof. Therefore, for it is a it is holy unto you. Every one that defiles it shall surely, surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is a Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Sacred, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Verse 16. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. That means forever. You're supposed to do this. Perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. So the Sabbath day is a sign between us and the Lord, the Israelites and the Lord. Not everybody, not all nations, the Israelites. And you're going to take it for a joke? It's like it's just another day? Really? Okay. You know the Lord sees that thing. He sees it. He sees it. So, don't miss the wedding. Make your calling and election sure. That's class. Any questions pertaining to class? Any questions pertaining to class? Uh, Adam, all praises for you, bro. Thanks for scribing. Thanks for scribing. All praises, most high. All praises. I'll just stay on a few more minutes for questions pertaining to class. Yeah, uh, when you spoke of man, no wedding garment, I don't understand the question. The wedding, the uh, wedding garment represents the commandments. I'm not sure what your question is, but that's the wedding garment. Keeping the commandments and the faith of Christ and doing the work. Maybe I'm, I'm miss. Maybe I'm missing misunderstanding. Uh, Brother Lloyd, uh, could you make it more clear? Am I just, Oh, what about scripture that spoke to? Of a stranger within that gate. 
Uh, that was not part of the class. That was not part of the class. Um, yeah, I still don't understand your question, bro. But but that stranger in the gate within that gate, um, I didn't go over that. Oh, uh, were there scriptures given before Matthew twenty two twenty nine? Yes, Matthew one through fourteen. I think it was 14. Matthew 22. 1 through 14. Oh, praise. All right, I'm going to uh, end it. Um, brothers and sisters, don't forget the Booster Club. I know we're on lockdown right now, but, you know, Lord's will, he finds grace on us. He op opens up the travel again so we can preach the gospel, do this work again. Don't forget the Booster Club. Don't forget the prayers, keep the leadership in our prayers. All of Israel that's keeping the commandments in our prayers for healing, protection from the Lord. All right, and uh, all praises for the class. All right, don't be fearful. Keep the commandments. Hold the line. Hold the line. All right, love y'all. And with that, say shalom. Most high, Christ bless.